Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the filter component. Before we get into this example, you must understand how this works. The filter component takes text that's inside of a collection item and it filters that item in the grid based on the text. So we have our collection list item here. This is Webflow CMS generated. Each one of these pieces of text is a way for this item to be filtered in the grid. We have 2020, blue, fun, CMS false, branding. This one is 2017, red, not fun, use CMS true, web design. These are controlled inside Webflow CMS. We have the year, we have a rich text of branding, web design, we have color in a drop down, we have the toggle, and we have fun. Updating any of these will update that text inside the item and then change how that item is filtered. So updating filters and types and all of that is very easy and very quick and can be managed by you or the client inside editor. You do not need to visibly see this text on the page. It needs to be on the published site, but it does not need to be visible. In all of these examples, we're going to keep the filters visible because we want to show that it's actually working. But if you wanted to hide these on the published site, you can do that. I can hide this right here, just show project name, and it's still going to filter by all of these filter options. It's gonna filter by 2017, red, not fun. Everything is going to work. Does not need to be visible, just needs to be there. Let's jump into examples and see how this works. Let's look at the super complex filter system made entirely by FNSuite CMS library and Webflow CMS. What we are going to do is filter this grid with search, with divs, with radios, checkboxes, and selects. All of these are gonna be working together. They're going to be configurable individually, and they are going to update this grid in real time. This is not difficult to set up. If you've watched example one, two, three, or four, it's the same thing. We're just adding a few more items to our array. Let's watch this working. This type of setup and mix it up or isotope would take a long time. It would be very JavaScript intensive. It would require customizations and you would need to know how to write JavaScript in order to set this up. With our library, it is just a simple array, a simple set of options, and it's super, super straightforward. All right, enough talking, let's get into this. I type in blue, it's going to filter by blue. I'll add development and we're blue and development. Let's add motion, we're also going to be adding motion to that. Let's remove blue and search by red and yellow and orange and remove development, remove motion. Let's also search by CMS true, reset the radios, 2020, 2019, 2018. Let's go to red, web design, awesome. Check that out. The whole grid is updating immediately. And I can set this up exactly how I want. Blue, we got the select, we got red. Check that out. We are filtering this grid, we have all these options, and now we're going to go into designer to see how this is set up. We're in designer, we're going to look at how to set up this super complex filter system all in Webflow. This is using the FNSuite CMS library. It is not using any other scripts, any other plugins, any other tools, just our library. If you haven't seen examples one, two, three, or four, I recommend that you check out at least one of those before jumping into this example. If you have seen one, two, three, or four, these are the same exact steps. We're not doing anything special or custom here. It's the same few steps. Let's jump in, see how this works. First, we need to have a class on our collection list element, not our collection list wrapper, our collection list. And here 
we have the class of collection dash list on there. Next, we need to apply classes to our parent wrappers. We are going to apply a unique class to every single group that we want to filter by. The text input is a group. The services buttons are a group. The color buttons are a group. The radio CMS true false is a group. The year checkboxes is a group. And this select input is a group. Now we need to have a class on some parent element, any parent element of each of those groups so we can identify all of the filter elements, the filter options inside that parent. Let's start off with the form block. Here we have a form block so we can get the text field in here and we have search parent as our identifiable parent wrapper. We're gonna be using search parent inside the JavaScript. Next, we have each one of our filter groups and we did it like this to show you that they can have the same base class as long as there's something identifiable. In this one, we have filter services, filters colors, filters CMS, filters years, and select test. All of these identifiable, unique classes are going to be used in the JavaScript so we can identify when we have a new filter group. After we have our parent classes applied, we need to go and apply our data attributes so the library knows what these buttons should filter by. What does development filter by? What does CMS true filter by? Let's go do that now. First, we go to our text field. In settings, we will filter by Asterix. Asterix is all. We are filtering by everything. You can type blue, fun, 2017. Anything you want to search by is going to be searchable with Asterix. Next, we have our buttons. Filter by branding. Filter by web design. Filter by development. As you can see, not case sensitive. Filter by motion and filter by strategy. We'll do the same exact thing with the color buttons. Filter by asterisk for all. This is essentially a reset button for the colors. And asterisk is going to filter by everything. We have red, we have yellow, we have filter by blue, filter by green, and filter by orange. When we get to the radios, we are going to apply our filter by attribute to the radio button, not the label, not the wrapper for the radio, the radio button. And in the radio button, we're going to filter by true in this example. It's going to search for the text true inside these collection items. Same thing with false, we are going to filter by false. The reset radios button is an interesting one. This looks like a div, but it's actually not. It is a radio button. And I'll go into Inspector to show you that. So we have our true, we have our false, and then we have this filter button. And when you open it up, it is a radio. We're calling it radio reset. It's display none. We don't want it to look like a radio. We want it to look like a button. But when somebody is actually selecting reset radios, they are just selecting a different radio button. And this is filter by asterisk. It is filter by all or essentially a reset. Nice. All right, let's go to the checkboxes. Same mentality as the radios. We're applying the filter by on the checkbox. We are not applying it to the label. We are not applying it to the checkbox wrapper. It is the checkbox, the input. Filter by 2020. Filter by 2019. Filter by 2018. Filter by 2017. Nice, easy. Then we have our select. The select is a little bit different than the other ones. We had to make it work in a little bit of a different way, but it totally works. We have our select selected. There is no inner elements here, so we have to apply everything here in the choices. What we're going to do is on the select data attribute, we're going to have 
on the select element, we're going to have a data attribute of filter by with asterisks. That means when something like so when select one, when there's nothing selected, it's going to be all. It's going to be everything. It's going to be reset. So we have the filter by asterisk on this select element. Each one of the choices has text and value. You guessed it. The text is what visibly shows on the page. The value is what we're actually filtering by. So if I have 2019 with a value of 2019, it's filtering by 2019. And that's it. It's really that simple to set up the select. We are all inside these choices and the choices will filter the grid. That's it. You're done. There's nothing else you have to do in terms of structure on the page. That's the full extent of setting up this complex filter system inside Designer. Now let's get into custom code and let's see this all working with just a little bit of JavaScript. We're in custom code and we're going to go through all of this line by line to show you how to set up this complex filter system. If you saw examples one, two, three, or four, this is the same setup. The only thing that's changing here is we have more filter groups, so our array has a longer list of items. Let's go through this line by line and see how simple it is to set something like this up. The very first thing we're going to do before the closing body tag is add the F and Suite CMS library. When we launch the library, we'll have the real script file. This right here is not the real script file. Next, we have our project specific script where we will customize how this works. Let's first run a function that's going to happen immediately. It's going to run this right away. And what it's going to run is creating a new library a new instance of our FS library, and it's going to target our collection list class. This is the class that is applied to the collection list element. We're going to store that new instance in a variable called projects grid. We're going to be using projects grid later on down here when we run our filter. Before we run the filter, let's look at the array. This is the difficult part of all of this. And all we're doing is just defining the classes of the parent wrappers of our filter groups. So we have our filters colors class. This is the add-on class we added to the parent wrapper of our color filter buttons. We have our search parent, our filters services, our select test, our filters CMS, our filters years. We define each of those parent wrappers and then we decide is it exclusive or is it multi? Filters colors, we're only selecting one color at a time, it's exclusive. Search, we are only searching by one thing at a time, it's exclusive. Filter services, we're allowing the user to select multiple services, so it's multi. Select test, we are only allowing the user to select one select item at a time, so it's exclusive. Filter CMS, we are using radio buttons here, so by default with radios, we can only select one at a time, so it's exclusive. And then filters years are checkboxes, and by default, checkboxes, you can select multiple at a time, so this is multi. Great, that was so difficult. Now we're going to take all of this list and we're going to store it in a variable called my filters. My filters is holding all of the powerful information here that's going to tell the library what we are filtering by in our grid. We're going to take my filters and we are going to use it down here. We take our projects grid, we're going to run our filter component, we're going to have filter array as my filters. This is all of our filter groups. This is what we're doing here. We're filtering our grid by my filters. We decide the active class of filter active. This is going to make any of these items appear active by adding a class to them and then applying styles to the filter active class. Then we have an animation here where we enable true, duration of 200 milliseconds, easing of ease out, 
effects fade translate at a 20 pixel Y axis. You can go and customize this animation very easily with our script generator and you can have any type of animation on your grid as you filter the items. That's it. This entire video is how you set up that entire filter system. If you understand how this library works, if you understand how this filter component works, you are going to be able to set up very, very nice filter systems on your Webflow site. That's effing sweet.